In this short video, I'll play around with Camel and Langroid. So what is a multi-agent LLM system? First off, what is an agent? You can think of an agent as a wrapper around the LLM. An agent is kind of like the agent in reinforcement learning. It decides what actions to take. In this case, the agent's brain is the LLM. A multi-agent system is just an ensemble or a collection of multiple agents. A popular example is MetaGPT, a multi-agent system that takes a one-line requirement as input and outputs user stories, competitive analysis requirements, data structures, APIs, documents. I've looked a bit into the open source world for multi-agent libraries, and of those, I'd like to highlight two today, Camel and Langroid. Camel is a novel communicative agent framework. In other words, it's a multi-agent framework. It is both a research paper and a Python library. Before we try out the library, let's get a brief overview of what the paper is about. So what is Camel? Well, technically, it's the name of their repository and paper, but the actual framework they introduce is called the role-playing framework. Here's how it works. You have an idea and you type it into, let's say for now, Camel. You define the roles, one for the AI assistant and one for the AI user. These roles will be explained later. The idea is passed to the task specifier, which adds or specifies a whole lot more about your task. This specified detailed task is then handed off to the user and assistant. The AI user is in charge of providing the necessary instructions and timelining to eventually reach the specified task objective. The AI assistant is in charge of implementing these things. In a way, it's like a team leader and a team member, only in this case it's a team of two. So it is multi-agent, but there are only two agents involved. Below is an example set of prompts they use for their AI society case. On an unrelated note, why does it need to be task specific? How does the prompt look for another case? Ah, after having taken a look into the prompts folder on their repository, I realize they have different sets of prompts, mainly because they want to showcase other scenarios where the inception prompting is not task oriented. Definitely stay tuned throughout the end of this video. If you guys haven't followed me, I highly recommend that you do so, so you can stay up to date with latest AI news. Lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn notification bell like this video and check out previous videos because there is a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from. So that thought, let's get right back into the video. Hey, great. Now let's try out their library. Let install, make sure you're using Python 3.9 plus. As of writing this, Camel doesn't have a great set of examples on their documentation page. All their examples are in their repository in this folder. They have an agents submodule and prompts submodule, though all of the examples for role playing primarily use society's submodule. Apart from the examples provided, it is not immediately clear how the agents and prompts mesh with the rest of the package. Below are the following folders of examples they provide. Let's poke around one of the AI society examples. We first import our libraries. Colorama is for colored text output. We will use role-playing, which simulates a role-playing session and abstracts away the conversation and internals print. Text animated simply streams the output. Then we insert our OpenAI API key. Next, we assign our role names to the user and assistant. The model type is none. With task, specify means a task specifier will be used. The last component is the task prompt or idea. You can find more about the role-playing class in the description. Afterwards, we use Colorama to print out the AI assistant and AI user system messages and task prompts. The output should look something like this. Finally, we run the simulation. This involves a bit of work on our end, but this is made very easy because of the examples. This is a lot of code, but before we run it, I'll walk through it and show that it's really not that bad. We basically have a counter n that keeps counting every step of the conversation. A step is the AI user instructing the assistant and the assistant responding. Once it reaches the turn limit chat jar turn limit, then it stops. 
That or camel task done, a special token in the inception prompting, is outputted by the assistant. We have two if statements to check if either party unexpectedly terminated and a bunch of print statements and formatting plus streaming. Besides the basic code for looping and terminating the multi-agent conversation, the main method is roleplay session dot step. That's it. Below is a snapshot of a bit of the output. It gets pretty long. This single run cost about zero do do fives. Bear in mind it will cost quite a bit more if the turn limit is higher and the task is more complex. But that's it. There are a ton more examples in their examples folder that I encourage you to check out. This is the gist of a camel. It's a lightweight, high level, compact library to get a multi-agent, two agents specifically, up and running in only 30-ish lines of code. There are the sub-modules I mentioned earlier, but the bulk of what you might use is in the examples. Time for Langroid. First, we'll cover a little bit about Langroid. It's a lightweight, intuitive library for building multi-agent LLM apps with ease. They also provide support for vector stores, Qdrunt and Chroma as of this writing, and a set of tools for function calls. For reference, the breakdown of Langroid's submodules is below. At its core, you're essentially setting up an agent on a particular task and executing that task. Here's how a barebones version of this looks. Check out their readme. They have some great starter examples, and their documentation also has a good getting started section. And check out their blog. Interestingly, they are not made with Langchain or Llama Index. Let's install Langroid is much easier. For brevity in this blog post, I'll cover just a simple demo from their page. I'll be covering the three communicating agents example, a toy numbers game where when given a number, n repeater, agents LLM simply returns n even, agents LLM returns n2 if n is even, else says do not know. The first thing we do is, of course, set our OpenAI API key. Langroid checks for Langroid checks for the .env folder, so that's why you see it structured this way instead. Next, we import our relevant modules. Okay, there's a lot going on here. No answer is just a constant string placeholder. It's convenient for your prompts as you will soon see. For more on constants, check out this folder in the repo. For almost all of your uses in Langroid, you will want to import a chat agent and chat agent config. Essentially, you're defining a chat agent with a config. The arguments you pass into this config are from Langroid language chart models dot open AI sci GPT. Specifically, you're passing in OpenAI chat model and OpenAI GPT config. Then we define our three agents. Notice how regardless of what role the agent has, it's always defined in the same format, chat agent with a specified config. In this case, we use the same config for all agents. Then we define a task and assigning the agent to that task, pass in a system message and assign a name. Running this task is as simple as to have these agents communicate, we assign the two tasks to be a subtask of the repeater task. That's it. You just learned how to set up a multi-agent system in Langroid in just a couple of lines of code. Bear in mind that Langroid is still a work in progress and the library is expanding. As of now, this lightweight framework is a great tool for setting up a multi-agent system in a few lines of code. It provides more flexibility than a camel in that sense, as the camel library is specific to their paper. Langroid also provides support for chatting with documents and tabular data. Let's wrap up. In this short blog post, I showcased Langroid and Camel, two lightweight, high-level, multi-agent libraries. Both of these libraries have a lot more customization under the hood, and I encourage you to delve further into them. Happy experimenting! I will leave all these links in the description below so that you can easily access them. It's a great read and it'll give you a lot more understanding as to how they basically accomplish this. So. With that thought, I genuinely hope you found it informative and valuable. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss an update from us. If you have any questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning.